Hi everybody and welcome down to Old Allens. Um, it's getting chaotic in here now. Uh, so, kitchen area. Uh, I've just mocked, mocked up this. It's a bit of um, cabinet sort of work top that's going to have a top on it. It was going to be this top, which is just a piece of an old offcut of a sort of a fairly plain uh, countertop. But I've been given a piece of wood um, very kindly by my friend James, and that's a, a big thick slab of beech wood. Uh, it's got woodworm in it. Unfortunately, it's been stored up for quite a while. It's got woodworm in it, um, but. I've got some treatment for that. I'm going to cut that down and um, treat it and then see how that looks, see how that goes. So because I've based, um, based all my measurements on this countertop and the beech wood is uh, considerably thicker, without trying to rip it down again, it would have to be ripped down with a chainsaw or something, without trying to rip it again to make it so much thinner. Um, it's going to stand up a little bit. So basically, my plan was the top was going to be flush with this. However, this bit of timber is, I think it's six centimetres deep, so it's going to stand up a bit, bit taller into that window space. As long as I can still lock the window, it's not going to be a problem. So I think I think I might be all right, just about, or I could route a bit out or something like that, but. I'll make it work. I'll make it work. I've got, as I say, I've got to do work on it anyway. Moving over to the little oven though, and grill and all of that, I actually managed to get from Tinternet um, a fixing of the right type. I that's not tight at the moment, and there's no sealant on there or anything. So I'm going to try and get that sorted up now, just quickly, just to test it and see if I've got any kind of uh, functioning gas. So here's the dangerous bit. <laughs> the reason that I need to test that now is that that's got to go into here. It's got to be fitted in and with the oven bit, there's got to be a shelf put in at the correct height and I've got to cut out the top, the, the timber top um, to suit as well. Uh, and there's no point doing any of that until I know this works because if this doesn't work then it's all change anyway so yeah it's sort of me stopping myself doing too much before I know that this is okay it's connected up um, the gas is on at the bottom it's off on all of these I can't smell any gas which is a really good sign yeah, it's been a few been a few minutes <coughs> So that's a good start. Still a bit nervous though. Let's give it a whirl. Air comes through. There's gas. Woo! There is gas. Flames are a little bit yellowy, but you can adjust the AC. That one's not as yellow as this one. So it should be more blue than that. But you can, this has a provision on here that you can adjust the, um, the actual flow rate, which might sort that out. I guess that one's flowing fine. This one's not. This is fab. This is the real big test. I don't even know how you're supposed to light this stuff. Oven. That's great. Check that out. The thing I like about gas is it's very easily turned off and on the bulb. That's for UK viewers only who will remember the British gas adverts. We took a real gamble on that stove. Because um, obviously we just bought it blind off of Facebook Marketplace. 
uh, the guy we bought it from I don't think he had had it running um, seems like the, the sink came, came from him as well he's stripping out a boat so um, that's that's where this stuff came from but um, so I, I'm really pleased that works because you know Mary saw it and loved it and it's it's good that that's going to be working working out for us um, things I've got to do now I've got to shoot off do a, do a bit of work oh my god I've got to do some work um, so I left the gas on on the stove left it all turned on everything all the knobs and things turned off so I'll be back down here a bit later on and what that means is I can close the hut up and then if there is any kind of gas leak the minute I open that door I'll smell it because the last time I put one of these second hand sort of gas units in that's exactly what happened I thought it was all okay um, put it in came back down sometime later opened the door and could smell gas so yeah that's uh, that's what I'm doing now I say it's all turned off at the minute and we'll see how we go. Kettle's on for the first time in the hut. Clearly there's a lot more work to do, but um, that's where the cooker's gonna sit. So, yeah, I'll we'll just get myself sorted out with a little bit of late lunch. Um, <laughs> the gas bottle's obviously not gonna stay here. It's gonna be sat on the floor uh, with um, just this top section poking out through this marked up hole that I've got a, I don't have a jigsaw here I've got to take that away and cut that out now I did cock this up a bit which is really annoying uh, the old adage of measure twice and cut once I measured once and bugger I made my measurements wrong so you can see down there there's a great big gap that should be flush to the timber um, so I had to put on an extra batten underneath to sort of double that up for support. So I'm annoyed about that um, and as a result I may end up changing this but probably not realistically. I think I'll cope. Um, but it has annoyed me. Arr, really annoying. Obviously all of this will be sort of boarded in, fronted in, um, and there'll be like a door on this side where the gas bottle is and the sink and all of that. And so we've got a shelf unit and storage under there. Uh, I've got a foot pump to put in. Foot pump is going to go somewhere on the floor in front of the sink. Um, it's literally just a twist and pump all the pipes will be outside and my water supply will be outside underneath the van um, so I can just like connect that up every time when I come um, I'll probably have to work out some way of keeping things out of it in the meantime I don't want crawling in there but, um, but that'd be quite nice and then we'll have a tap for the sink for the first time a working tap rather than picking up a jerry can and pouring it in so that would be nice right then this is a bit of metal that uh, was a signboard for my business when I did more sort of landscapey jobs where I was there for a while I used to obviously pop this sign outside a bit of free advertising uh, I don't need it anymore I haven't used it in years so I peeled off all the vinyl Um, lettering Mary did one side I did the other so that's top marks to her um, and um, yeah just marking it up for, to cut out a foot square piece and in the center of that is basically going to be a hole about that big uh, for the pipe of the stove to go through so that I'm neating up the ceiling bit
literally just been burning a few scrap off cuts of wood in there. The fire's been going for about, I don't know, 40 minutes, something like that. Not roaring it up either, you know, just a little bit in there. And this, this timber here is red hot. That's, that's as long as I can touch it for. Yeah. Now I did have on this wall um, some fibre boards, some sort of like heat proof board, which is what this stove is currently sat on here. Not that actually underneath the stove gets hot. It gets warm but not hot. That, that board is stone cold under there. Um, I was hoping to get away without putting anything on there but I'm going to have to put that fibre board back on because that's just way too hot, that's scary hot. But if anyone's got some decent suggestions, um, I think, you know, Mary, in the ideal world Mary would have liked it tiled but that's just going to be too much weight I think, you know, we're, we're already heavy. Um, so to tile it and also tiling is not flexible and, and everything in here moves a little bit so um, that's not ideal so any solid sort of sheet materials that are good for heat protection let me know uh, wood metal stood off metal sheeting if that might look quite nice possibly a little bit industrial possibly but um, stood away from there if that might work then let us know cheers I just spent 20 minutes looking for a pencil. looks like a crack runs all the way through the timber it does yeah. like I knew this was always going to be weak a weak point but I'd hope that crack wasn't that bad but it is it's okay I can work with it because um, there's obviously a support bar in, in the hut that will go under that, but it's annoying. What I'm going to try and do, I don't have a biscuit jointer tool or anything like that. What I'm going to try and do, and I appreciate this is going to be really difficult. I'm going to try and drill two holes and try and line up the other two in this side. And glue in um, some wood and then sort of clamp it up and see if that'll see if that'll work so that's what I'm going to try there just to sort of strengthen it or stick it back together um, I had to cut this bit out because the oven sits in there there's my attempt at um, sorting that out there's a, a dowel in there another one there I measured them basically by eye, so I'm not quite flush at this edge. Um, there you go. Just going to focus. There you go. But hopefully, if it'll stick together, um, I can sort of like sand that back later to make that a bit better. It's certainly not, not it's not too bad just put a lot of tension on it you 
Oh, no, just a little bit of rope. Also, not there. I can't remember what the name of that knot is, but it's it's ideal for making a loop and putting a lot of tension on it. Um, just wound it up with a stick, and these these clamps are literally just stopping that stick from unwinding. So, and then tuck that away. Well, there's the work surface. Um, I say there's the work surface. This is just me. I've just brought it down here to test whether or not I've cut things in the right place before I treat it for the woodworm and then uh, put a finish treatment on it. The repair has come out okay. That's pretty good and solid, so that's worked well. Um, fits nicely with a little stove. Uh, I can put a sort of a shelving unit thing here, possibly, like that maybe or just an open front of shelving uh, thing for storing things on so what with that and the shelving that obviously oops, I'm gonna have down there and the storage underneath bear in mind the water will be outside now um, because that will be pumped through a tap which I've yet to fit um, and in fact make because I was gonna make one out of a bit of copper pipe but I haven't got any copper pipe yet so I need to find that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, yeah, we should have quite a lot more space generally, storage-wise, kitcheny bit, while still having a nice little oven. So I'm dead chuffed about that. I think it's going to look quite nice. That's the first coat on then, so only oh, about another four of those to go. I've got at least four hours now until I can put on another one. So I'm just going to leave this in here, drying up, come back later today and uh, do another one. Things are moving on a pace. So, uh, the cooker top, um, kitchen work surface, is on. So from the piece of timber that James gave me, we now have a rather nice beach countertop, six, six centimetres thick. So uh, that's uh, two and a half inches, two and a bit inches, two inches is 50, yeah, two and a half inches. Uh, so that's a big chunk of timber. Uh, the oven is fitted in, uh, so that's good. And the gas bottle fits. This is um, sorry, gosh, it's it really hard for you to see. Uh, this is what the hole was for in these timbers. This gas bottle top just to poke out. So that's great. That's done. Uh, the sink is just temporarily screwed in. Just a couple of um, horrible screws there, just to hold it in place. The pipe is on the sink, that's connected. The tap, um, that's not connected yet. Look, pull it straight out there, just a bit of 15 mil pipe. Um, because on the end of that pipe, is gonna be this blue, blue pipe, which will connect up to the tiptoe pump, which is down there. So that's all coming on, and I'm now just stripping out these old things. I don't even know what these were originally for, but I use them as shelves in here. I'm just taking the timber off of those because those will be the doors on the front of here. So, really all station to go at the moment, um, which is great, you know. Um, really pleased with that, that's taken a lot of work uh, to get that bit done. And there's still a lot of work to do to finish it all off the kitcheny bit. But, it's coming together and that's the main thing, so. Ooh, not far off, not far off. Hopefully by next Christmas should be uh, should be about done in here. Mm. Right, this is classic me uh, coming on now. 
I have just been saying again, oh, I'm the jammiest guy in the world, because, right, as you know, I'm reusing old bits of timber and things like that. And there I said I was taking these apart, and I worked it out. I got this, you know, I got, I got them spaced out, and there were nine of them. And I went, oh, that's annoying, because it's five on one door and four on the, the other. So then I got these pieces of timber, put one at the side, one at the side, and I went, yeah, I'm so jammy. I'm so jammy. Right, and then... I realised that they were already in fours when they were together, so I didn't actually need to take them apart, I just needed to clean them up. So now I've got to build some doors that would have already been doors, they would have been ideal. But anyway, that's fine. I'm going to cut these to length, pop these on. Uh, yeah, fine. Ah, but there we go. Classic, classic me.